it changes you. You don't look at things the same. Sorry. We had just had his first birthday and Asen had a really bad cold and usually with the colds he's pretty active still but with that cold he was just down. I just had this sick feeling in my gut when Anna told me she was at the hospital with him that I was just like I looked at a co-worker and I said pretty sure my son has cancer. Asen's pediatrician came in and said yeah there's a mass behind his left lung. When we first got walked into oncology and we saw a little boy completely bald and in a wheelchair and he was skinny and I mean, is our son really that sick, right? That's the first thing that I ever thought. It took me like the first two months of me coming back, leaving Anna and Asen in Vancouver to come back to work. Cry like every day. I can't even think about what could have happened, right? If we would have lost him. <laughs> I met Asen right around his first birthday. He was this cute little kid who came in with this tumor that we saw in the x-ray. I sat down with the family and I offered them the opportunity of going on a research study that would look at Asen's genetics and look at whether he carried a high-risk gene or not. Our research is trying to understand why some patients develop really severe toxicity to their medication like a chemotherapy and trying to basically prevent that from happening. What our test was able to do was to identify in ASIN that not only did he carry one risk gene, he actually carried two different risk genes which placed him in the highest risk for heart failure. With this research it potentially saved his life. He could have died if he had that chemo. It was the Wednesday, he, we found out it was cancer. Thursday, he got a central line put in. Friday, he started his first day of chemo. He woke up and just had a huge smile on his face, like the biggest smile. And we knew that he was going to be OK. The whole after cancer thing is just like, we try to just let him be his own person and like just try to do as much as you can because you just don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, right? Like anything could happen tomorrow. Any cold? What if it's cancer again? Any bruise? What if the cancer came back? Just because the treatment ends doesn't mean that the journey ends for him. Hearing loss was like the least of our worries. But at this point, we don't know if there's going to be other side effects years from now. I think I'm a stronger person because of it, and Asen's the strongest. This type of work wouldn't be possible without the fundraising dollars that come in through the Canadian Cancer Society. For me, taking someone like Asen, it's, yes, I love the fact that he's cured and he's leading this healthy life. What's amazing is that, you know, he's leading it without heart toxicity. We're really just scratching the surface at the moment with the support of the Canadian Cancer Society. We've been able to show that the findings that we've made in, in these pediatric cancer patients apply to adult patients as well. So this really expands the scope of the, the impact of this research. I imagine a day where every adult or child diagnosed with cancer will be offered a test to identify which medications are the best for them. This saved my kid's life. Like, I don't think ASIN would be here today. Cancer is not a good word, but after seeing Asen, I mean, there is hope.